he fell something like 40, 50 feet off this cliff, very scary, and he was wearing an Apple watch. If you're in a single motorcycle accident, don't give up hope. We have to get around that motorcycle bias of proving that our riders weren't driving recklessly or sort of didn't deserve this to happen to them. And within a catastrophic motorcycle accident, if you don't take this training and you don't understand how to tie a tourniquet, how to take a helmet off, right. how to move someone, you know, seconds count. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today on Carolina Justice Report. We're so happy to be back for season three. Today we're talking all about a motorcyclist who drove off a cliff in Utah. Stay tuned. So welcome back today. I'm joined with attorneys Sarah Austin and Justin Lovely, who you know very well already at this point. Season three, we excited? I'm pumped. Yeah. <laughs> you so seem pumped, Justin. Yeah, we've had what, really four years of this podcast and now we're... Uh, True, we, we didn't really start with calling it season. We were called season, until, so I'm, I'm, yeah, we're glad. Till right. later, yeah. Well, kind of a crazy story. You know, as most of our audience knows at this point, we're heavily involved in the motorcycle community. It's a passion of ours. We have lots of people who ride within the office, but uh, there's a motorcyclist who drove off a cliff in Utah. And I just wanna say, before I even say any more, well, let me finish, I'll, I'll say this first. His Apple Watch alerted first responders to help save him. So we'll get into that in a second. But falling off a cliff, I always think about this when I'm driving my car through the mountains or when I go and visit somewhere and there's those cliffs, that's like my worst nightmare. Yeah. No? Yeah. Do you guys ever think about that? Because a lot of times they don't even have barriers there. Well, you it's, just it's like, bridges for me over water. That's what, that's my, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? What do you get is that your fear? Yeah, the fear, bridges go, over fear. water? Bridges over water, cliffs, same thing. I wouldn't want to be do that or be in this guy's shoes. I guess I could see that too. I have a friend who's like deathly afraid of going over any bridge because that they're worried about that. Yeah. What about, about you, Sarah? I just, from, from living, I lived in Colorado for a while and my dad worked at Thunder Mountain Customs. And so riding through the mountains and the switchbacks like that mm -hmm. is like one of the coolest places that you can ride. So Scenery wise, but you don't ever, that. that doesn't ever freak yeah. you out with the cliffs? I mean, sometimes there's a road in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park that this, the turns are very uh, steep and there is no guardrails at all. But that's kind of standard and I'm not sure about this gentleman if he was from Utah or anything yeah. like that, but um, I'm not surprised that you ride on those. As, as a rider, like that's one of the best rides you can yeah. take right. through the mountains. Like well, here in Myrtle Beach, we're flat. Yeah. Flat as flat can be, so we don't really have to worry about that. But I'd, I'd be curious to know in those areas if they yeah. get a lot of people kind of falling off the sides of those things. Yeah, but the cool thing about this story is that he was able to be saved. He fell something like 40, 50 feet off this cliff, very scary, and he was wearing an Apple watch that was able to alert first responders, which blows my mind, yeah, the technology awesome. that we have these days. Um, I don't know, Justin, have we ever had a case like that? Well, we haven't, but I think we're going to start seeing more and more of those, not only in motorcycle wrecks, but in any other kind of car crash or anything that we get. And I think it's awesome. The new uh, iOS update provides that new technology. Mm -hmm. It's in your our new phones. It's in our watches. And I think it's going to start, you know, proliferating everywhere. And, uh, you know, it's going to give us some, some data to, to help us work cases up, but it's also going to help save lives just like it did in right. this guy's case, because if he was out there and he didn't have that uh, iOS, uh, SOS, I, I should say, right. uh, I mean, he would be toast because nobody would know where he was at. And yeah, well, and it's crazy because from what I have gathered just from reading the story, um, when he fell, it basically detects has some sort of detection and it gives him like an alert where he can like turn it off or not. Like, hey, we've we've you know noticed a, a crash detection and you can either hit it, say, no, I'm fine. Or in his case, he didn't hit it and it alerted first responders. It alerted, you know, a life vac um, a helicopter to come and get him. So a uh, huge thing for him. And I know you said your dad was riding somewhere and kind of got an alert one time, right? Yeah, the first time I heard about this was actually, I got my dad an Apple Watch for Christmas. And so then he's been riding his bike around the neighborhood yeah. and he called frantic because he's like, Sarah, my watch is gonna call the cops on me. And he didn't know how to turn it off because you get that no the notification, I guess, that counts down that they yeah. alert the authorities. It says, have you been in a crash? And if you don't respond, no, it just it, automatically does it. And so I had to, to teach him yeah. how to respond, no. But he was just riding his bike through the neighborhood and I guess came to an abrupt stop at a stop sign right. or something like that. Yeah. But he, he had triggered. stopped moving. Well, it, and it know, triggered. You and I were kind of talking about how do they detect if you've been in a crash or not. Mm -hmm. And from what I can gather, it's kind of, yeah, that abrupt stop or like impacts. 
um, which I don't know how they would deter or figure out your impacts, but um, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm interested to find out more about it. And like you said, Justin, if it's gonna be more and more of a thing that we see and how it can help future cases. Yeah, we're definitely gonna see it. And then the issue we're gonna, we're gonna run into is we're gonna figure out how do we get that data, right? And then we also right. wanna get that data from at-fault drivers, right? Because mm -hmm. who knows what it, what it shows when we get the actual raw data behind it. That's true. There's gonna be another era of experts to help us uh, see what this data means and interpret the data. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be a change. And things like this is always changing with the technology. And then of course it's gonna feed over into the law. We gotta figure out how to help you know, help our clients, you know, best use this data to their right. advantage. Right, so. Well, and I know that, again, we said that we're, we're pretty flat in our area, so we don't really have to deal with any cliffs or anything, but how could this translate over to a motorcycle accident in our area? Well, yeah, I mean, if you come to an abrupt stop and let's say you're riding, you know, way out in Aner or going to Florence and you're out, yeah. you know, kind of in the country, you know, and you've, you've, you're riding by yourself. Okay, and a lot of people do ride alone. They don't ride in a group and, and you, you go off the side of the road. It don't have to be a cliff but you come to that abrupt stop or it does detect you you know, flipping or rolling over. I mean, and obviously first responders will be able to find you just like they did in, in the Utah man's case and be able to save your life. Yeah, yeah. How would you work up a case like this when it's a single single rider? I mean, could they still be at fault or is it like you can't, you don't have a case if you're a single rider? Well, we always tell everybody if, if uh, and family members, if you're in a single motorcycle accident, don't give up hope. Because a lot of people always say, hey, I'm, I'm, I lost control, I was at fault. They right. need to bring a claim. And we want to investigate those claims because there could be uh, you know, a road hazard that, that caused, uh, mm -hmm. caused your injury, okay? And so that'd be a case against the Department of Transportation. And it's worth looking those up right. and investigating that and saying, hey, is there something there? Is, is there a cause of action where we can get some kind of recovery for the biker? Nothing ever happens for like weather, right? Weather is bad and it causes an accident. Is that ever a claim or not? Well, who are you going to sue? I mean, I don't know. The I'm just upstairs, asking the questions. I'm just asking anything. the questions, Justin. Yeah. Plaintiff versus cop. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, no, we, true. It, weather is a factor in our accidents. But I mean, you, and you can operate a motor vehicle, you can operate a motorcycle on uh, in the weather, in the rain, in the snow, yeah. anything. Yeah. The 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 question is going to be: Are you operating that as a reasonably prudent driver is in the same circumstances? You know, if you're out there hot riding in the rain, well, right. you're going to be at fault. If you're you know taking it nice and easy, and some jackass comes over and knocks you over, yeah. Well, that guy's at fault. We can still bring a claim. Now well, that's something that interesting insurance company is going to bring up. So it was the weather, it was the rain. No, 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 no. It was the <laughs> reckless behavior of the at-fault driver. And that's where we step in. Yeah, to defend yeah you your have rights. a responsibility to drive even more safely when the conditions right. are bad. Right. I just like this technology specifically for motorcycle mm -hmm. riders because it follows, like we, we can get some data from cars, newer cars especially, right. about this kind of stuff. But if it's on your watch or your phone, it's sort of following the person. So right. like mm -hmm. Justin said, we get a lot of motorcycle wrecks where the, I mean, the rider flies feet into the woods or wherever they are mm -hmm. um, and they don't really remember what Ooh. happened so if if it can alert to first responders to where you are that's kind of no, that is good cool. and I think we talk a lot about tracking as like a negative thing like you know everybody's tracking everything we right. do on our phones but I'm happy to see this as a more positive um, result of all the tracking. Well, we're also going to see it, you know, like in a, we get a big truck case or we get mm -hmm. even car cases. We can get black box data when we do a download of the cars. Right. So this is almost like a, we can get a download of a motorcycle because motorcycles don't have those black boxes. And I think the Kawasaki models are the only ones that have a motorcycle black box where we could actually get an expert to download that data. They're just not, they're not in Harleys. They're not in any of the, uh, the motorcycle brands. So. And it would be really awesome, not to cut you off, but um, if it does track speed, I know it it tracks GPS, it has to be tracking speed. Oh, absolutely. Since we have to get around that motorcycle bias of proving that our riders weren't driving recklessly or sort of didn't deserve this to happen to them, because right, that's what we right, run into right. a lot. So if we can show right by that data that they weren't speeding or any of that stuff, mm -hmm. um, that would be awesome. Objective data, data. you can't, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and of course they have some things that still need to be figured out with this because they're having issues with extreme sports, you know, skiing or even roller coasters and stuff. They're having, mm -hmm. you know, these issues. So, you know, there's always kinks that need to be worked out with stuff like that, but I, I definitely like it. Now we, you know, in our area, we also offer accident scene management courses um, or classes, and those are offered as much as people want them, right? Yeah. We have them all the time. Most of the time we have them in the off season because people like to ride during the, the summer months, but that is something, you know, in this case, I'm not quite sure how it would have helped if, if he didn't, if he was by himself and since he got knocked unconscious, but if he was conscious, a class like that would be great because he would have some, I don't know, if he needed a tourniquet training or whatever, um, he would be able to kind of use some of that, those skills. Well, look at it this way. If, if you fall, even if, even if it does send a signal out, okay, 
it's going to take first responders 15 to 20 minutes to get to you mm -hmm. okay and within a catastrophic motorcycle accident if you don't take this training and you don't understand how to tie a tourniquet how to take a helmet off right. how to move someone you know seconds count mm -hmm. and so going back to, you know if you get our class you're going to learn all these things whether you're riding alone or you're riding in a small group or a big group right so and even if it does trigger i mean if you don't know this training yeah. it's not going to help you now the good news is hopefully you are having wearing an apple watch or whatever device that, that has this kind of technology it triggers it it's alerting the first responders you do take our class you do have this training that's going to minimize the likelihood of a fatality yeah. and that's our goal here we want to train everybody here in the community to to get this get this training and you don't have to be a biker to take it if you just want to get mm -hmm. your loved one wants to get certified come in because sometimes people are passengers right they're not riding the motorcycle right but they could be involved in the accident or their fellow rider could fall and if they have that asm training they can jump off the bike and jump right in and help save a life yeah the more i learn about the class the more i'm like it just, it just needs to be a requirement that when you get your license you have to take the class we you know it just needs to be there there's no risk we we cover all the costs i don't yeah. know why more people won't take it yeah. and of course like yeah. you just said we're trying to get it i'll do it every weekend if everybody mm -hmm. will sign up for it yeah so. yeah yeah, and then, you know, lastly, I was thinking about this whenever we were talking about who you would sue for what, but going back to these these guardrails on, on the cliffs, is that ever something that you can use to fight the case if there's, if there's that barrier, safety barrier there or not? Well, again, we'll have to investigate the, that particular stretch of road, okay? And so that's where this data will come in because we'll know exactly where the loss, change of velocity happens, you know, and mm -hmm. we can kind of get an expert to reverse engineer that and say, this is where it happened. And then we get another engineer to say, hey, this is a faulty uh, section of the road. Yeah. And this was, was it a contractor? Was it the DOT? Who was it? Now the guardrails, that's, that's a different uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. Was there a guardrail that should have been there Okay, or was the guardrail itself faulty? You know, we've we've looked at some of those cases over time. I got you. And so there's all different aspects. And so that goes back to what I was saying. If you're a single rider and you fall, it, don't, don't give up hope. And if your family, your family shouldn't give up hope. Let us investigate it. And it's it's it costs you nothing. I'll investigate it for free. We'll see, hey, is this something we can do? But at least we can give you some closure too and say there's not a case here. You know, it was your fault. Right. But right. either either way, it's something that needs to be looked into. Yeah. Well, because every so often you ride somewhere and you're like, man, that's a sharp turn. They should have a rail there. And then there's enough accidents that, that happen in that one place. And then all of a sudden there is a rail there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I was just curious if that yeah, ever was a factor in what it, you guys right, do. Because they're going to do a, the DOT will do a road study. Right. Yeah. And if, if they because they're not spending, it's a government, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to spend money until they get the right, money. Right, and then when right. they get the money, they go, how am I going to spend it? Mm -hmm. And what gets neglected? South Carolina, our roads. Right. Mm -hmm. And along with that is the guardrails. Mm -hmm. So and it could be a nightmare for the motorcyclist. Right. We got potholes. We got the, the lack of guardrails, uh, uh, the uh, longitudinal joints where they're expanding the roads because of all our growth. All those are issues that everybody needs to be aware of and look out for. Sure. Sure. Well, any final thoughts on this? Get an Apple Watch, I guess, right? Yeah. Seriously, that's what we, we should probably get. They're give, so expensive, Justin. I know. We, we'll probably do a giveaway at Bike Week, and that's what we'll do. We'll wrap okay. off one or something like that. Because we got to, yeah, idea. we got this needs to get out and spread the news. Hopefully, everybody watches this, subscribes to us, mm -hmm. and helps spread the word on this new technology that can save a life. Yeah, and you're right. We will be at Bike Week in May over here at the Beaver Bar on Merle's Inlet. So we would love to see you. And Justin says we're going to be giving away an Apple Watch now. So I guess <laughs> that's a reason to come by, right? There we go. We will see you guys there. Of course, let us know if you need anything. If you if you have any questions, visit us online at justiceislovely.com. Also, let us know about these accident scene management classes. We would love to have you be a part of that. So, so, so important for you and your fellow riders to be prepared if something should happen. Um, you guys can visit us anywhere that you consume your social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're all over the place. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll see you next time. When life gets